This is Docker on Microtik series and we will show you everything that you need to know, the hardware, the software and step-by-step -step examples. And guys, Microtik got something new coming up, man. Let's watch. Docker containers on router OS? Yes, it is possible. Our operating system is Linux based and our developers have gone out of their way to give you the freedom to make custom solutions never seen before. Private DNS, network access storage, web servers, IoT management, home automation, those are just a few examples. Whoa, 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 whoa. All these features in this small router? Wow. Microtik got a lot of micro solutions for bigger problems to give you an idea of what you can now set up directly on your Microtik router. There is no need to buy another single board computer and the necessary software comes for free with your router OS license. Even if you have never set up Docker containers before, you will be able to do so on router OS. This is part one and in this video we will learn about the prerequisites for your setup before you get started. So let's get into it. First of all, you need to make sure that your device is of one of the following architectures. ARM, ARM64 or x86. Many of our routers have an ARM CPU. You can check the architecture of your device under System Resources. The x86, if you are not familiar with it, is not an architecture that we use in our manufacturing. You can only have it if you've installed the router OS on your own hardware such as your old PC. Next, you want to make sure that you have upgraded to the latest router OS version. The support for Docker containers has been introduced starting with the stable version 7.5 and to enable it you will need to download the extra packages zip file from our website. Make sure you pick the correct architecture. Open the file and install the one name container on your device. So simply meaning this um, features only works on version 7.5. Okay. You can do this by simply copying the container npk file to your router and rebooting. Now, you have a new section called container, but as a security measure, the full functionality is disabled and can only be enabled if you have the router physically with you. Since containers give a lot of power to the user, they could also give a lot of power to a remote attacker. They might execute malicious code in your device in an attempt to steal your information, compromise other devices on your network, or add your device to their botnet. So basically what all he's talking about is security in this sense. Security, security, security. So before you proceed any further, please make sure you understand the security risks involved and know how to protect your device. My advice would be to set a good password, learn how to configure a firewall, and to just not expose any ports to the wide area network unless you really know what you're doing. So if your device is secured, we can execute system device mode update container equals yes. This will prompt you to press the reset button on your router. After the router boots up, the container functionality will be enabled. Finally, the last thing you should consider is storage. You can set up containers directly in your router's storage if the space allows it, but this will add an unnecessary wear and tear, so unless you have something like a CCR2216 with an SSD in your M2 slot, I suggest you store the container data either on a USB flash drive or an external SSD. Your external storage needs to be formatted to either ext3 or ext4. This can be simply done from within router OS. Just plug your storage media in the USB slot, go to the disk section, select the correct drive and click the format drive button. Then pick the ext4 file system from the list and click start. Once the formatting is complete, you are ready to set up your first container on router OS. In part 2, we will continue to learn by setting up a piehole container which is going to get rid of ads in our entire network at once. Thank you Microtech for this. Wow. 